fuck are you doing here? You didn't kick out of fucking junk here. That's You're it. gonna have to tell us the whole story later. Uh, yeah, that's a video for you know, be nice donuts. Hi, Future Seabass here. Basically, what happened before I started recording, Clayton went to a junkyard um, in Brentwood, California, and there was a 2ZZ there. And so when he went there, all he wanted to do was remove the valve cover from the engine. This, is, this isn't this is like a pick and pull type of junkyard. This is more like a, you go in the office, they present you the item, and you pay for it. So I guess when Clayton was going to buy the engine, he had asked them if he can pop off the valve cover to see the inside of the cams and make sure that inside the engine is clean. And they didn't want to. They were like, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. And so it's like, we've never had this issue wherever we've purchased engines, two ZZs. They always say, yeah, go ahead and pop off the valve cover. No problem whatsoever. So I guess, I don't know, Clayton was a little bit desperate and he really needed the engine. So he i guess when the people went to like they turned around and went to go do something else i guess clayton took the initiative to remove the valve cover and do it super quick and i guess they saw him and they pretty much told him to get out of the junkyard they told him get out get out you're, you're not gonna buy it. i'm not gonna sell it to you no more the engine and so that's why he was all upset i guess but yeah um, he, he was talking about it and he did say that he might do it into a live stream. We might bring back the future lives. We might bring back the live stream. So stay tuned for that guys. Donuts. Oh my God. What a fat fuck. There was only three left. That's right. The rest. Dude, really? Without the, without the tree? It sucks. So what do we have back here? A oh, fucked too easy, dude. Yeah, you, you don't even know if they're going to want the core. I know they, they said core charge too, so I think it's probably the same, like a hundred bucks, but they said they're gonna be ready by at, they said latest five, so God. Oh, oh well look at this. Sheesh, pristine, look at that. Round four exclusive for dealerships. Wow. Ooh. That's fucked up. No Anyways, let's go. So Clayton got kicked out of a junkyard. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was. That's not even, that's <laughs> we'll tell you guys a story maybe after when we're having dinner, when we're all calmed down, knowing that we do have this 2ZZ in the back. Just have to take a look at it. It can be like, not everyone like, oh, I drove all the way from San Jose to Oakdale. Oh, no, Brentwood to Oakdale. Fuck that place. I couldn't record. I was trying to record, but the guy was like looking at me and shit. Well, if you're. If he's already giving you crap about oh, the engine. Am I taking a look at it? Still white driving. Ooh, Dutch Bros. So we got to Oakdale. Like 50 miles or 50 minutes from Stockton. Uh, to a gas station. Nah, just go and just keep going. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's looking hot. You need to nothing. I need to get my AC done in this fucking car, dude. It's Bruh, bad. no AC life. I did it on the Celica, but I don't even drive the Celica. It reminds me of the Tundra that I went to go look at. If only I could buy a Tundra. A V8. Just get the V6, you know, get the extended V6. No, I don't want V6. I don't want it to GR. There you go. Tourist shit. Tourist shit? Oh, it is. You lost this? No, it has drums. <laughs> I'm here for the Celica. Don't see you. I need to my car. The fucking coincidence that there's a Celica. Yeah. All right, well, let's go see what they got, dude. Come on. What's up, man? Not really. It kind of looks like it's just been sitting here. Like over oh, yeah. Hey, but he had that. If you think about it, we know someone that has a 1TZ for 500 bucks, though. It's not bad. Dude, that looks trashed. What else they got? It's an auto. 
Look at that steering wheel though. Sheesh. I'm good. Not too interested right now. Kind of just hanging out. Supercharged. This is not having a day, huh? Look at all that shit. Look at all that shit. It's all broken, and then they broke the servicing belt tension over the stuff that's like worth some amount. It justifies a purchase at the end, too. Let's go pay for that. Hi, future Seabass here yet again. So basically there was some lost footage or there wasn't any footage between this transition. But basically what had happened was uh, we found this junkyard in Oakley and they had said they had a 2ZZ out of a 2003 Toyota Matrix. So that's why we were in Oakley. We went to this like mom and pop uh, junkyard. It's not a pick and pull where you walk in and kind of like grab your own parts. They kind of have a little bit more controlled where they inventory their stuff and they know what they have. So we had originally called ahead of time and said, hey, we want this. And they're like, yeah, that's we, we got that. It's it's really good. 130,000 miles, whatever. I don't know. I forgot. But anyways, they wanted about 800 bucks for it. So I was like, okay, cool. You know, if it's controlled and they know that it works, let's go get it. So we get there and they're like, oh, it was like 15 more minutes. We're almost done taking the engine out of the car. So that's when me and Clayton just started walking around the junkyard, kind of like killing some time because what were we supposed to do? Anyways, um, they call us over. They present us this engine that you guys saw in the video. And I'm just like, what the hell is this? Like, what is this? Like, there's full of, it's full of dust and crap and there's no valve cover. So now all the earth elements and stuff just falling on it. And so we had asked them, like, yo, what, where's the valve cover? Why is it missing? Why, why are you guys not protecting this engine, like, better? And so this guy, this guy, I guess, I guess he's the owner. He's like, oh, someone broke into the junkyard last night, and they started taking a bunch of car parts. And I'm like, so they came specifically for this Matrix to take the valve cover? I'm like, I'm not buying this guy's story, Clay. Let's just get the fuck out of here. And so Clay, he's kind of desperate. He needs an engine. And he's like, you know what? It doesn't. The cams don't look too bad. It looks like it could probably clean up some good. We could probably clean it up. And let me let me go get my 19 millimeter to turn the crank. Because he wants to see if the engine's locked up or not. Or that if it has the feeling of compression whenever we turn the crank. So he goes. He comes back. And he's turning the crank with the wrench. With the 19 millimeter wrench. And I guess these guys don't realize that I speak Spanish because they're, they're, it's a Spanish, they're a bunch of Mexicans and I guess they're speaking Spanish and I know what they're saying because I'm Mexican, I'm Hispanic, I know how to speak Spanish. So they're over here talking shit that one of them is telling the other guy what in Spanish, he's telling him in Spanish, what does he think he's going to turn on the engine by turning it by hand and they like kind of like break a, break a bluff. And so I tell him, I tell him in Spanish, and I tell him, he's just testing it to make sure it has compression and it, and it turns freely. Like, what's your problem? And I told him in Spanish, and the guy just got shocked. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> and it's like, sometimes I get confused as Middle Eastern or, like, not Hispanic at all. So it's kind of like my positive, I guess, something that I like. You know, I, I like it that people don't think I speak Spanish. Y yo hablo el español muy bien, so no andan, no andan pensando que yo no hablo español bien, so. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> enough chit-chat on that. Basically, uh, I told Clay, let's not, dude. Let's not risk it. Let's not do it. And Clay was just sad and upset. And we just left the junkyard. And so we started doing more research. We found another junkyard in Arroyo Grande that had two two zzs and so clay called him he said verified miles it's still in the it's still in the car i could send you a video with the engine running this and that blah 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 and this guy did the most to get us to be confident on the purchase of this two zz so i told clay dude just buy it not not every junkyard does that and you should be you should be glad that he's doing this for you 
So Clay went to Arroyo Grande, bought this 2ZZ, he brought it back to the shop, and this is where the video continues on. Basically what Clay's doing is just preparing the engine to put it back into the Celica. Sorry guys if I speak a lot, but I kind of wanted to like not just jump clip and kind of leave you guys like wondering like what happened. But anyways, enjoy the video. It's clean, man. All right. Let's see over here real quick. Using the cleaning tank. Motor mount's nice and washed. Valve cover's all finished. There's a bunch of RTV. I like, just grind it out, I think. Timing cover's super clean. I have all the gaskets over there, so. Got the tensioner, took off the pulley. I'm gonna replace that real quick. But yeah, we're gonna run over to the parts store. I'm gonna get some spark plugs, some high temp grease for the clutch, valvoline, and um, spark plugs, I think. That's pretty much it, yeah. So, anyways, clean, continue cleaning all this stuff, get the mating surface redone. I forgot my lift bolts at home, so I'm gonna go grab those tomorrow. I'll put on the valve cover later, but everything's technically done, so yeah. No, because my lease just ended. Like, Jeez. All cleaned up. Let's put these gaskets back on and get some fresh OEM RTV. Damn. 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 New Azing clutch. This is for uh, reference purposes, by the way. So if someone's like, you didn't do that, I did it. <laughs> How's it feel to be a K20? V Tech. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Get this reseal though. Valve covers on, OEM. Get the spark plugs. New water pump. Tensioner's looking good. New pulley. So basically, timing cover's already done. I changed the lift bolts. There's the new ones, old ones. Fuck you! It's a, it's a family channel, bro. Come on. Oh. Break you! <laughs> Break you! <laughs> so yeah, now I just got this front side of the motor with the cooling lines, axle carrier bracket, heat shield, and then just the cooling lines and the lift solenoid on this side. And then I can add the transmission, and it's ready to go in. We already have. The engine bay cleaned. We just took out that K20 that was in there. But, yeah, it's already freshly cleaned. <sighs> so, tonight or tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow I'm probably gonna get the car started. But tonight I may just put it in and have the motor mounts connected. So then, like tomorrow, I just gotta come in, you know, work my way up from the bottom and then, you know, get the car started. Make sure the oil pressure builds in the engine nicely and bleed the coolant and power steering and just take it from there. So, not too bad. Um, yeah, we're just cleaning the rest of the transmission just to make sure we don't get any more leaks after swapping everything. Got the purple power. So I'll have this comb on my rack. But anyways, I'm getting there. Just a little bit more. We can mate them, put it in. Alright, don't mind the mess currently. Uh, everything's pretty much done before I'm going to mount it to the transmission. Like I said, timing cover's done, valve cover, we got the header on, make sure everything was torqued, have the uh, heat shield, the axle bracket, I place some of the cooling lines right here. I don't have them connected because that wiring harness sits between the cooling lines and right here, so there's that. Clean the hell out of the throttle body. I mean, the clutch has been on, so put the new lift solenoid in, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then the front, also got the thermostat and everything else, so verify the knock sensor was a single wire, not a wide band, so we're good. So this is all prepped for the 2000 Toyota Celica GTS, or I guess 2000 to 01 setup, but yeah, everything's back together. Now we're just gonna add the transmission. I already have the shift fork greased up with the new throttle bearing and we're just gonna put it back together. Connect all the bolts around the bell housing, 
put the starter on and then lift this baby up and put it in there. So yeah. Hello. Sorry I haven't been recording. I'm just trying to finish this up. Still have all the parts laid out, just some extra pieces. <sighs> okay, so motor's in, all the motor mounts are on except for the passenger side. Trying to see to route the serpentine belt and reach some other key pieces on that side. Anyways, everything's back together on the top except for the air intake and the, obviously you get to put on the fluids and stuff. Um, everything's connected on the bottom except for the driver's side axle and I'm finishing up this one currently. Uh, and yeah, so I'm going to start it up pretty quick. Um, well, first I'm going to let the oil rise by not having any spark plugs and um, or having the spark plugs in, having no coil packs, sorry, and then having the fuel injectors disconnected and then just letting the oil pressure build real quick until I have the oil pressure light off and then I'll plug everything back in and start it up. But yeah, everything's pretty much connected. So yeah, only probably another 30-ish minutes to get this thing ready. All right. Go ahead. Do it five times. So that was three times. Oh. It's just the engine starting. All right. Is there, so when you're cranking it, do you see an oil pressure light? Okay, go ahead. Oh. All right, keep going. I would do it one more time. Stop. So now I'm going to connect everything. It might take a second to start because this thing probably hasn't had fuel in it in a while. So. It's probably going to give us a check engine light just because we have everything disconnected. So it's probably going to be like, oh, misfire this or fuel injector coil pack warning that. All right. Probably will give us a check engine light though. Right. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All the gas. <laughs> like fucking steam. Damn, yo. Yeah, because I mean, we had all the disc. But damn, it started right up. Doesn't sound too bad. Woo, we got smoke. Alright, so next morning. So car sounded pretty good last night. I didn't record afterwards, but I just went to check engine light and it started right up this time. So we in the coolant currently. Not bad. Yo, this shifter feels phenomenal. I first maiden voyage right now. I'm getting some fresh gas because I don't know how old this gas is real quick. Just gonna put like 20 bucks in. Definitely has an exhaust leak, I'll tell you that much. It was a little bit low on power. You can hear the rattling. I don't know if you guys can hear it on the video. But yeah, it's rattling and it's puffing. You can probably hear it right now. It's a little bit louder than, than the uh, one it's supposed to be for stock. So, let's take a look at it underneath later. For now, coolant should be bled. I'm gonna... Well, it feel pretty good. I'll do some more testing later, but yeah, coolant's pretty much bled, and I'm just gonna do some minor things like flush that power steering, and just do some more testing, make sure all the EVAP and uh, all the other codes pass, like the CAT, and get this thing up for sale. If someone wants to buy it, let me know. But yeah, hit me up on Instagram.